Can you guys hear me on the grandstands? Oh, hello, hello. Let's go drifting. I think it should, yeah, that sounds pretty good. Yeah? Can you guys hear me pretty good? Can someone wave to me from the grandstands if you can hear me? Right on. You guys ready for a good day of drifting?
people, the everyone who's sitting in the grandstands, you're more than welcome to come to the grass area up front and sit on these bleachers here if you'd like to. It's a bit of a better view and you're a little closer to the action. If you guys would like to move up to the grass area for the grandstands, feel free. It's uh, obviously of no extra charge and it's a little bit better of a view and you're closer to the action, so feel free. Some of these people bite, just, yeah. They're, they're good people though, feel free. Okay, here nothing. Okay. Who's ready for some drifting today? Well, thankfully, it looks like we got a beautiful day today for some good, uh, some good tandems. Looks like we're going to be uh, qualifying should start in a couple minutes here. So there's snacks at the concession stand uh, by the BCDA tent there, and uh, yeah, get your cool drinks and be ready for some fun action today.
Alrighty. Look at Joe go in the smoke machine. That thing is an absolute weapon. <laughs> All right, here we go. Last little practice run between Axel and Josh, and then we're going to get the show on the road. Axel, not long ago, getting towed off a track for heater core issues, but that heater core can't stop a Volvo. He's still out here getting his last practice lap in. Josh, absolutely flying through this course of that V8 G35. That thing, even though limited to a 235 tire, that's a quick car right there. Also, don't forget that there is a back as well um, in between competition or qualifying and competition. Feel free to check that out. There's lots of fun driving. Uh, it's a faster layout in the back there. All right, we got 15 minutes before qualifying starts. This is an announcement to spectators and drivers. Have your cars on the line ready to go. Make sure to get some snacks and some drinks at the concession tent, the blue, uh, the blue one right across from the BCDA tent. And uh, yeah, should be a really good competition today. Beautiful day for it.
Drivers, five minutes, get your cars to the line for qualifying, five minutes. I repeat, five minutes for drivers, get to the line for qualifying lap. If you don't make it to the line in time for someone to make their second run, uh, fear the consequences. Get to the line. Don't forget, at the concession, rib sandwiches and smokies and cold drinks. They're delicious and very affordable.
Drivers, get your car to the start line. I don't know why you're all standing in the pits. You're supposed to be qualifying. Start walking to your car.
for the competitors uh, that went back to the pits, you need to come out uh, to the grid drivers meeting. Chris, Simon, and Nick specifically.
Our driver's meeting is over and driving should start in about five minutes here. Qualifying should start in about five minutes. Grab your seats, get a good view, and uh, get ready to have some fun and watch some great driving.
Alrighty. Our first driver. Gaston Morrison in the Hard Knock Stunt 350Z. Just his practice car, he's got a pro car as well. Go cast on throwing the first touch and go really well. Keeping up that speed going into the peanut. Carrying it around, not slowing down at all. Here comes Gaston coming into the keyhole. Let's see how he can do. Can he put it up onto those pool noodles? Great line for Gaston, putting it deep into that second last outside zone. Here we go, finishing up strong. Can he keep it together? Yes, he can. Just kissing those cones on the outside zone. Perfect run, really good first run from Gaston. All right, so a little bit of a confusion between the judges and the start line there, so that would be considered a practice run for Gaston. Here we go, this will be our first official qualifying lap. Caleb Dicer in the Turbo Miata. This thing is an absolute weapon. Caleb's been building it little by little over the past year here, and he's really, uh, he's really made himself a little uh, warship, you could say. This thing is quick and light. He may not have as much horsepower as everyone out here today, but he uh, he really makes that car move. All right, here we go. As the lights extinguish, let's see if Caleb does on his first qualifying run. All right, Caleb, deep into the first touch and go. Really clean line. Slowing down a little bit, coming into the peanut, but nothing too extreme. Here we go. Coming out of, to the, out of the peanut, carrying loads of speed. Smoking out that Miata, almost going too wide. Here he comes out into the pool noodles. All right, keeping it deep through this last outside zone. Let's hear it for Caleb. Great first qualifying run from Caleb Dicer deep into the last wall. Great first run for Caleb. Next up, one of our louder cars on the grid, Chad, also known as Stunt Shrek on Instagram. He is also one of our stunt drivers that uh, likes to compete locally and down in Evergreen. Let's see how he can do here, lining up for his qu first qualifying run of the 235 shootout. All these drivers limited to a 235 width tire this weekend, so Sometimes having that extra horsepower, if you're way up there, really doesn't make that big of a difference uh, when you're on a smaller tire. All right, here we go. Chad coming out of the chicane. Let's see if he can put together a good first qualifying run. Flicking it in. A little late on to throttle, but he's on it now. Coming into the peanut, deep into the wall section. Chad, not too much angle through the run, but staying on throttle. Here we go, let's see how it does into the pool noodles. Little shallow into these last outside zones. Let's see if he can hold it together through the last bit. There we go. That's a little deeper for Chad. Left foot breaking through that last outside zone. Overall, good run for Chad.
All right, up next, Jay in the Tri-City Motorsports E46. Jay, one of our newer competitors, but he's been getting better and better every single comp he enters. Goes to show, even if you're not the most qualified driver, it's worth signing up. You're gonna learn a lot driving with these guys that are a lot better. It's really the only way to learn is to drive with people better than you, even though it is, uh, it could be very intimidating. All right, Caleb Dicer, sadly, uh, first run with a zero. I didn't catch it, but from the judge's angle, he entered a little too late. All right, and uh, Chad in the 240, coming in his first run at a 51. I repeat, Chad coming in with a 51 for his first qualifying run. All right, let's see how Jay does. Coming out of the chicane. See if he can carry enough speed to get through this first outside zone or this first touch and go. Jay, a little bit late of an initiation. We'll see what the judges have to say about that, but carrying loads of speed coming into the peanut. Jay, keeping it together. Oh, Jay's straightening out, coming into the peanut, but he's gonna take the rest of this lap as a good practice for its second qualifying run. Jay, upset with his first, his early part of the run. Here we go, finishing it strong though. He'll be mad coming for the second qualifying lap. There we go, let's hear it for Jay. All right, here we go, Josh Weens in uh, the LP4, or you could say LS Power G35. Let's see what he can do. This VA entering a little late, Josh, coming into the touch and go, catching that cone, here we go. <laughs> the peanut, carrying plenty of speed. Josh pouring the smoke out the back of the G35. Little shallow on the pool noodles and the third outside zone. Let's see what he can do coming into the last one. Little shallow, little shallow on the angle too, but he's getting it figured out. There we go. Josh, just a little shy on the throttle. Really needs to lay into that car. Jay Bry in the Jay Gree, sorry, in the blue E46. Judges have given a zero for straight in, in the back of the peanut. We'll see what they score Josh here. Matt Rosowski though in the Lordco Racing 350Z having a great start to his year, winning his first comp down in Evergreen. Let's see what he can do. He won our last 235 shootout. So he wants to come back and get the second win here.
All right, Josh Ween, G35, scoring a 57. Josh Ween, scoring a 57. All right, here we go. Matt in the 350Z, let's see what he can do for his first qualifying run. Here he comes into the one, two, three. Matt shooting off with a lot of speed. Great through the first touch and go. Keeping that speed going into the peanut and the angle. Let's see what he can do for the last half of the lap. Matt really getting into all those zones here. Let's see if he can touch the wall with the pool noodles. Deep into it, but missing those pool noodles. And a little shallow on that third outside zone. Let's see what he can do at the end. Left foot break, Matt, just a little offline, coming into the last zone, but putting together a good run. He's gonna wanna improve that for his second qualifying run, but he'll take it for a first one. Our next driver coming all the way from Alberta. Sean Cordeson in the JZX100. This thing is, if it sounds like diesel to you, it's because he's got a diesel turbo setup or a diesel style turbo setup with a compound turbo uh, 1.5 JZ. This is one of our horse, this is one of our higher horsepower cars. And uh, you'll see it here. Sean's car is an absolute weapon. Matt, Matt scoring a 76 in the 350Z. Not a bad run to start off with, but he will want to up that for a second run. All right, here we go. Sean Cordeson in the JZX100. Let's see what he can put together for his first qualifying run. Coming all the way from Alberta. Here to make a name for himself. Sean absolutely tearing up the first two touch and goes. Coming deep into the peanut, Sean staying heavy on that throttle. This is what the judges like to see. Not a lot of handbrake and just a lot of throttle commitment. Sean coming cooking with loads of angle into those cool noodles. Deep into the third outside zone, Sean with a really good run here into the last outside zone. Let's hear it for Sean Cordeson pouring the smoke out of that JZX100. Great first qualifying run for Sean. Really pouring out the smoke with that car.
Alrighty, I have been informed by the concession that their pizza oven is back up and running. So if you would like to get a pizza, uh, I can guarantee you they're delicious. I've, I love that. I've, I've eaten everything else they've made and it's all delicious. So highly recommend getting one of those from them. This is their first time having it out. So show them some love for being out here on a hot day. All right, looks like we got a uh, little bit of confusion here, but uh, should be back and going in a little bit. We got Clinton, our uh, grassroots champion from the season, lined up with his 240, LS powered 240. This thing is, I mean, it's a proven car and Clinton's definitely a proven driver. All right, Sean coming in with an 87. Great first run for Sean, coming in with an 87, putting him in our, our top qualifier spot. All right, here we go, Clinton at the start line. Let's see what he can do for his first qualifying run. I assume it's gonna be a good one. Here we go, flicking it into the one, two, three. Great through the first touch and go, and the second one, carrying all that speed into the peanut. Not quite as much throttle commitment as Sean, but he's putting the course together. Different style of driving, but it all depends. If you can get a good lap, you can get a good lap. Here we go, deep into the pool noodles is Clinton. And into the third outside zone. Let's see how he carries the end of the track. Little shallow on the angle and, well, I'll get through the last part of the outside zone, but a little shallow coming into the last outside zone. We'll see what the judges score that. Seems to be, uh, seems to be a common thing for the drivers here. We'll see if they can change it up for their second qualifying run. All right, lining up for his first qualifying run, Axel. Surprisingly, our only Volvo in competition today. Usually we got about three or four of them, but Axel holding it down for the Red Block Society here. Let's see what he can do with this little turbo 740. I mean, if you look at the car, you don't have to look too closely to see it's seen some, uh, it's seen some track days. Axel's a great driver too. Previously driving a 740 wagon, but uh, really finding himself in the sedan. All right, let's see what he do. Let's see what he does. All right, into the three, two, one. Axel going a little slow here. Great into the first touch and go, and the second one. Getting a lot of speed here, coming into the peanut. Can he hold it together? That is a yes, ladies and gentlemen, he can. Coming out of the peanut. Keep that speed, Axel. Bring it out to the pool noodles. There he is, going deep into the third outside zone. Great into this last zone. A little shallow, actually, for Axel. A little down on horsepower compared to some of these other cars, but doesn't take him out of the competition. Sometimes it can be harder for these faster cars to chase the slower car. All right, next car up, Cameron Dirks. If you've been here before, you know to plug your ears once he gets on it. This thing is as loud as could be. I think between him and Joe, they, uh, they might set off a fire alarm in a building two blocks away from here.
All right, uh, judges correct Sean's score to a 92. Judges a correction, not an 87. Sean scoring a 92. Next, Clinton in the purple 240, scoring a 62. And Axel in the Volvo 740. Here we go, getting the 63. That's my man Axel making it happen in the bow. I think he's probably going to get a 93 though on Axel on the second qualifying. But here we go, Cameron Dirks at the start line. Here we go, Cameron Dirks. Through the chicane. Old catch it a comb, but I think that doesn't, oh, we're gonna reset here. Cameron catching a cone on his first run. Here we go. There we go. Through the chicane. Through the 3 2 1. Let's see what he can do. A little handbrake entry. A little conservative from Cameron, but great into the first touch and go. Carrying all that speed through the second one and into the first outside zone. Loads of angle and speed from Cameron coming out of the peanut here. Let's see what he can do getting into the pool noodles. All right, a little bit of a slow transition from Cameron, but he'll still get a decent score with this run. Deep into the last outside zone. Can he hold it together for the rest of the run? Yes, he can. Cameron laying onto that throttle to finish the run. Great first qualifying run for Cameron. We'll see what the judges have to say about the handbrake pull into the pool noodles, but other than that, it seems like a really clean run. Next competitor from down under, Joe, in one of his uh, one of his few pro cars, you could say. This thing is an absolute weapon. Seven liter V8. Let's see what he can do for his first qualifying run. Joe's been out of the country for a while, but he had two practice days at Agassi, so he he should be pretty comfortable in the chassis. All right, here we go. Jojo. Of Joe of Augmented Racing, through the chicane, clipping the cone, he does not seem to care. Here we go, into the first touch and go, great start from Joe, carrying all that speed into the first outside zone. Joe staying on throttle all the way through the peanut, that's what the judges want to see. Coming out of it too, let's see if he can get on throttle, get his speed back, coming into the keyhole. Just shy of the pool noodles, Joe carrying loads of angle through this track though. Let's see what he can do through this last outside zone. Let's hear it for Joe. 
great end to the run. Let's hear it for Joe. Woo! All right, Cameron Dirks, the previous run in the 240. Cameron Dirks scoring a 73 in the block 240. Our next competitor, Angus. Some say who let the dogs out. I say who let the cows out. Joe not getting a score. Joe getting called back to the line for a restart. If any of the drivers can hear me, send Joe back to the line, please. Joe, drivers, please notify Joe that he needs to come back to the line for a restart. I see you all talking. All right, Joe's got it. Here we go. If you're curious, if you're curious why Joe has to restart, if you if a driver hits a cone in the in the chicane leaving the lights, uh, it is considered a restart for their run. They have two strikes. If you hit the cone on the third time, you are getting a zero. So let's see. Hopefully Joe doesn't hit the cone. All right, Joe, for his first qualifying run on paper, let's see what he can do. Hitting the cone again. Joe, having to restart, will he do a full run? Hopefully not. Yes, he will. This one will not count for points. All right, here we go. Can Joe not hit a cone? Yes, he can. Going extra slow through the chicane. 
Oh, he hit a cone again. That is a zero for Joe. Joe is officially getting a zero for his first qualifying run, even though he managed to get three in. Everyone, give Joe a big goose egg. Joe getting plenty of practice laps for his second qualifying run. Angus warming up his tires again. He's been sitting for a little bit. Up. We have Angus in the Corvette. Let's see what he can do. Angus has put this thing actually not into too many walls. Angus is a good driver. He's just been hit a lot by other cars. Let's see what he can do into the first touch and go. Great for Angus. Carrying a ton of speed. Looking like one of the fastest cars coming into the peanut here today. Let's see if he can keep that angle and speed up. Start to pour out the smoke out of the back of that Corvette. Coming out of the peanut with a ton of speed. Let's hear it for Angus. Putting in a great first qualifying run. Deep into the third outside zone. Can he keep it together for the whole run? A little shallow in the last zone, but getting deeper into the end of it. Fantastic first run for Angus. He's going to be happy with that one. All right, JJ getting a zero, obviously. Angus coming in with a 48 for his first run. Judge is obviously seeing something I didn't, but here we go. Chris in the street S13 coming over from the island. Let's see what he can do. Great initiation for Chris. A little slower, but getting into the first touch and go really well. Coming deep into the peanut here. Chris, one of our lower horsepower cars, but really putting it together for the first run. 
coming out of the peanut. Here we go, get on it, Chris. Let's see you get into those pool noodles. Great right into that second and third outside zone is Chris. Coming into the last one, clutch kicking his way to heaven. Here we go, Chris. Staying deep into that zone. Good on him. Great first run for Chris. We'll see what the judge is giving for a score, but it looked great to watch. All right, Nick coming down from the Okanagan in this beautiful 240SX. This thing absolutely gorgeous. I love that he puts him into competition, even though I know he likes to backtrack a lot. All right, let's see what Nick can do for his first qualifying round, sponsored by Big O Tires up in the Okanagan and After Hours Supply Co. Nick down, coming in for his first qualifying run. Let's see what he can do. Through the chicane, no cones, good for Nick. Here we go, three, two, one. Coming in with a great flick into the first touch and go. Carrying low to speed and angle through the second one too. Deep into the peanut is Nick, not getting off the throttle at all. Just gaining speed while he's in there. Great first start to the, for Nick. Here we go, coming into the pool noodles. Let's see how deep he can get. Great into the pool noodles, a little shallow on the third outside zone. Let's see how he can do through the final one. Nick, not quite getting out deep into that last outside zone. Carrying loads of speed. Might not give him as good of a qualifying score, but that speed and a little less angle might give him an advantage in the lead here when it comes to tandem battle. All right, our next competitor, Simon in the JZX100. This thing looking not super gripped up. It was great. A little bit of a sleeper build. All right, Chris Rimmer in the S13, getting a 49 on his first qualifying run. Chris Rimmer with a 49. Let's see what they give Nick in the 240. Thankfully, we got a little breeze coming in to cool us off. This sunshine is beating down today. It's gorgeous out here. All right, Nick down 31. Nick, come Apparently, from his spotter saying he got something coming his foot well. Let's see what Simon can do. Run. Getting deep into the touch and goes, Simon. 
a little slower than some of the other cars, but managing to put in a great run and hit his zones through the first part of this course. We'll see what he can do in the second half. Simon getting deep into that second outside zone. Can he get up to the pool noodles? Yes, he can. Simon getting deep into the pool noodles. Let's hear it for Simon. Let's finish off the run deep into the last outside zone. Let's hear it for Simon, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! That's what we've been looking for all day. All right, Simon Harrison coming in with the 72. Simon coming in with the 72. I mean, I think he got 172 with that wall drag, but we'll, we'll go with what the judges have to say, I guess. Gaston, he is our last qualifier here. I don't know if you remember, he actually took the first lap, but the judges were not quite ready for him, so that's just a practice lap for him. He's gonna get his first qualifying run. We are sending Gaston. Let's see what he can do for his first qual first qualifying run. Excuse me. Alright, through the chicane, making it safely. No cones touched. Alright, three, two, one. Here he goes into the first touch and go. Gaston getting right up to it. Into the second one too, carrying all that speed into the first outside zone of the peanut. Really deep into those tires. Gaston putting in a great first half of his run here. Deep into that second outside zone. Can he carry that speed into the pool noodles? Yes, he can. Gaston getting right out into them too. Here we go into the last outside zone comes Gaston. All the angle, all the speed, all the smoke. Let's hear it for Gaston. Great first qualifying run. Putting the car everywhere where it needed to be. All right, now we re-rack him. Caleb Dicer, first qualifier. We're up for his second, second run here. Caleb getting a zero in his first run, entering a little too late just needs to get into it a little earlier, otherwise putting together a great run. Gaston coming in with the 79. Gaston with a 79 for his first qualifying run. Great start for Gaston to the day.
Alright, here we go. Caleb Deister for his second qualifying run. Caleb looking a little late on the entry maybe again, but great through the first touch and, zo touch and go. And the second one, here we go into the first outside zone. Goes Caleb deep into the peanut. Can he keep that speed coming out into the into the keyhole here? Here we go, Caleb, step on it. That little Miata pouring the smoke out of the back. Here we go, into the third outside zone is Caleb with tons of angle into the last zone. Let's hear it for Caleb. Getting a little shallow, but making it out there, putting a good run together. Hopefully Caleb should be getting a score for that one. Depending on what the judges have to say about his entry, the rest of it looked really good for Caleb. Here we go, Chad, up for his second qualifying run. Let's see what he can do. Chad, in one of our more pro cars, you could say today, putting in a decent first run, right through that initiation, getting out to the first and second touch and go really well. Jay carrying all that angle into the peanut. Can he keep it? Yes, he can, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what he does through the second half of this course, coming into it really fast. Jay carrying all that speed right out to the pool noodles. Good. Here we go. Oh, but it looks like he saves it into the last outside zone. Chad, not going to be super happy with how he got into that last outside zone. But the rest of the run was great. So we'll see what the judges give him. Dicer, Caleb in the Miata getting a 71. Let's hear it for Caleb putting down a great second qualifying run in that Miata. All right, and that is a zero for Chad. Chad zeroing out in that last outside zone. Judges considering it a straight. All right, here we go. Jay Gree up for his second qualifying run. Jay getting his zero in his first one, straightening in the peanut. Let's see if he can keep it together. Jay catching a cone on initiation or leaving the chicane. Looks like he did not see the shutdown light, so Jay will most likely finish this run and then line up again. Jay's gonna be bummed out that he's getting nothing for that run. That was a great run for Jay. Good practice run for him, I guess.
Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. A little bit of miscommunication between the driver and everyone else. Uh, he is coming back to the line here to take another stab at this qualifying run. All right, here we go, Jay for his second qualifying run, currently sitting at a zero. Let's see if he can get through the chicane without hitting the cone. Here we go, clean start for Jay, into the 3-2-1, great initiation, a little bit of a handbrake, but getting him to angle quickly. Coming into the second, touching, oh, Jay! Oh, it keeps it off the wall, but I'm afraid that may be a zero. It looks like he could have kept it together, maybe. Into the second outside zone, Jay carrying all the angle, coming out to these pool noodles. Jay stalling out of it, and that will be Jay calling it for his competition day. Today, Jay will be doing plenty of open drift. He'll be upset about that considering he just made one, but sometimes that's drifting. She ain't a nice sport, but she's a fun one. All right, up next, Josh Weens in the G35. He will be wanting to up his original qualifying score. Let's see if he can do that on his second run. Here we go, Josh Wings. For his second. Let's see what he can do. Coming through the chicane. One of the few drivers to not hit any cones today for the chicane. Into the second out, or the first initiation here. Let's see what he can do. Through the first touching, first and second touch and go. Clean for Josh. Into the peanut. Come on, Josh, get on the throttle. He's got it. Just a little shy on the throttle for Josh. Isn't getting him where he wants to be with that car. Really having to step on it. Here we go. Into this third and last outside zone. Let's see what he can do. There he goes. Gets on the gas now. Josh putting together a run. He's not going to be super happy with that score, but it's a score. It'll get him into the show, and that's what counts right now. See what Matt can do in the Lord Co Racing 350Z. Matt coming hot off a win in Evergreen. The last time we did a 235 shootout, Matt was the winner, and he has been judging our grassroots comp all year. He, he said he wanted to come out and claim the, the double title here for the 235 shootout. So let's see what he can do for his second. Oh, 
Matt in the Lord Racing 350Z. Let's see what he can do for his second qualifying round. First one getting a 78. Let's see if he can step it up into the 3 2 1 goes Matt. Deep into that first touch and go. Cooking both of those cones, but getting back on throttle here. Coming into the peanut. Stay on throttle. Two through and all. Here we go. That's what we like to see. Matt coming out of the peanut, carrying all the angle, all the speed you can want. How does he do into the pool noodles? Getting right out to him into the third outside zone, really deep. Let's see what he can do into the last outside zone. Matt pouring out the smoke. Catching both those cones on the last zone. Rough start for Matt for his second run, but finished off really strong in that last outside zone. Josh Weens coming in with a 50 for his second qualifying score. That is a 50 for Josh Weens. Right, Matt getting a 67 for his second qualifying run. Not the score he is looking for, but I'm sure he's not too concerned when it comes to tandem comps. Let's see what Sean Cordeson can do for his second qualifying run. Sean, our top qualifier currently. Let's see if he can stay in that spot here. He's up that score. Great for his first two shots he goes. Even to the peanut. Sean Ford on the angle coming through that peanut. Loads the smoke out of that car. Full throttle commitment from Sean through the first half of this course. Let's see what he can do coming into the pool and it'll get him right up to them. Sean, going a little too much angle. These Alberta boys aren't quite used to the curves. All right, well, I don't think Sean's too well. He's still got the top qualifier spot as far as I can remember here, so he's still sitting pretty. All right, next driver up, your grassroots champion this season, Clinton Renau. Making a name for himself in the lower mainland here. Let's do for the two driver shootout coming into his second. Remember, as it is hot out here after qualifying, there's a couple cars left to go. Remember to get a snack and a cold drink. With the drivers having so much issues today, seeing this caution light, sorry about the delay. We've been playing around with the placement, so hopefully we Maybe, there we go. Hopefully we won't get these long delays here as the competition goes on. All right, next up, Clinton. Let's see what he can do for his second qualifying run. 
coming through the chicane. No cones hit. Three, two, one, here we go. Clinton with a great initiation coming into that first touch and go. All the speed. Can he keep it together through the peanut? Yes, he can through the first outside zone, keeping it tight. Clinton coming out of the peanut, carrying all the angle. Can he keep it into the pool noodles? Yes, he can. Into this third and last outside zone. Here we go. Let's hear it from Clinton putting together a way better second qualifying run. Definitely going to be improving from his first score. Clinton will be happy with that run going into the tandem competition. Next competitor, and probably my favorite car out here, maybe besides Caleb's Miata, Axel, in this beautiful, fresh off the factory floor, Volvo 740. Not many cars out here could register for collector's plates, but I think he might be of age. Clinton. Clinton getting a 79 for his second qualifying run, putting him in a great position coming into the competition, or at least the tandem portion of our competition. All right, in the 740, let's see what he can do for his second qualifying run. Starting off with a 63, he's gonna wanna up that a little bit. Here we go, a little bit of a slower start for Axel. That thing's not too quick off the line, but once it starts going sideways, it tends to stay that way. Axel, great amount of angle coming through that second touch and go into the peanut here, carrying Continuing to carry all that speed that he had through the touch and goes. Let's see what he can do into the pool noodles. Great for Axel. And deep into the pool noodles and the third outside zone. Let's see what he can do in the last outside zone. Stay on it, Axel. Here we go. Great finish to the lap for Axel. He's going to be happy. I will definitely think his score will be improving from his first run. All right, plug your ears. All right, Cam scrubbing the tires. All that means is Cam means business for the second qualifying lap. Let's see what he can do on this LS Power 240 SX. All right, here we go, Cameron Dirks. Let's see what he can do for his second qualifying lap. Cameron had a good score. I can remember high into the 70s for his first qualifying run. 
Three, two, one, Cameron. Great, a little bit of a handbrake, the lamb initiation, but that's all right. Do the first two touch and goes, good. Deep into the peanut, Cameron staying on throttle. Right through that second outside zone, transitioning into the pool noodles here. Deep into the pool noodles is Cameron. Just catching the end of that third outside zone. Let's see what he can do for the last one. Staying in it. Let's hear it for Cameron Dirks, ladies and gentlemen. Putting together a great second qualifying run. Next up is JJ. JJ currently sitting at a zero right now on his first qualifying round, getting three strikes from hitting the chicane cones. Let's see if he can just take it slow and get a run under the bucks here. All right, JJ, take a deep breath, make it through the chicane. Let's see what you can do. All right, lights extinguished. Can he make it through the chicane? This might be the most entertaining part of JJ's run. Let's see what he can do. Let's hear it for Joe. Here we go. Three, two, one. Into the first touch and go is Joe. Great, deep into it. Nose clip in the second one perfectly too. Into the peanut is Joe. He's got three laps under his belt. He should be nailing this run. Here we go, into the second outside zone. Great. Stay on throttle, into the pool noodles. Little low on the angle, but Joe's just trying to get a run under his belt here. Into the last outside zone, late on throttle, but he's on it now. Here we go, let's hear it for JJ getting a run in the books. All right, next up. Fresh out of the cattle farm, Angus. In this beautiful Corvette. I mean, it's seen a couple doors, it's seen a lot of tires, but uh, Angus keeping it together. This is a sweet little pro car. Angus starting uh, making his debut in Spec D competition last uh, last summer. He's going to be competing in uh, Spec D for a full season this year. I'm excited what he can do, but this is a great warm up competition for him to get a little more comfortable in that Corvette before dancing with all the big boys out in Alberta. Let's see what he can do in this Corvette. Through the chicane, clean as Angus. Three, two, one, into the initiation. Big flick for Angus. Getting all that angle into the second touch and go. Great on the nose clip, out to the peanut. A little shallow on that outside zone, but staying on throttle through the peanut. Can he keep that speed up? That seems to be people's issue coming out of it. Yes, he can. Into the pool noodles is Angus deep with all the angle you could ever ask for into this last outside zone. Stay on it, Angus. Let's see it, buddy. Here we go, let's hear it for Angus. Just kissing that cone on the last outside zone. Angus getting definitely some X Factor points on that pool noodle section. Pouring on the angle.
All right, here. Chris Rimmer coming over from the island. Three, two, one into the initiation. A little bit of a slower initiation for Chris, but he's doing just fine getting out to those two touch and goes. Right into the peanut is Chris. Oh! Looks like he had to shut it down. Not quite sure what happened back there, but he's going to finish this lap. Got a little practice in before the tandem competition coming up in a little bit here. Here we go. Chris into the last outside zone. Let's hear it for Chris coming all the way over from the island. Bring a little bit of that island style to the mainland is Chris Rammer. Here we go. From the big Okanagan, big O tire, Nick down, coming in in this beautiful 240. Absolutely gorgeous car. I saw her powered. I mean, this thing is just, this thing is right out of 95 Japan. This thing is perfect. Nick, absolutely, he's been driving this car for a while. Just got the body kit paint on it last summer. Got comfortable with the car and then put all the nice parts on. Smart guy. All right, let's see what he can do for his second qualifying run. Nick down. Through the chicane. Oh, called the caution on him, but Nick didn't quite see, see the light, so. Nick getting a little practice run in. He doesn't know it's practice run, but he'll figure out soon enough. Everyone wave to Nick. Tell him it's a practice run. Joe getting a 62, JJ getting a 62 on his second and only qualifying score. Angus getting a 56 in the Corvette. Angus getting a 56 in the Corvette. Chris Rimmer with a zero in the S13, straightening in the peanut. Here we go though, Nick down. Clip the cone in the chicane. Let's see what he can do, can he do it clean? There we go, Nick clean through the chicane, three, two, one. Great initiation from, from Nick, really aggressive through the second touch and go, carrying loads of speed into the peanut. Nick getting deep out into the peanut from what it looks like from here. Can he keep the speed and angle through the rest of the track? Yes, he can through that second outside zone. Get on it, Nick. There it is, great on the walls, Nick, into that third outside zone. Keep it together for this last outside zone, Nick. Come on. Here we go. A little bit of an angle correction, but keeping it together. Nick putting in a run he's going to be happy with. A little bit of an angle check in the last outside zone. We'll see what the judges have to say about it. Final score, but otherwise a great run from Nick. Last competitor here up to qualify. Our second last competitor to qualify. Simon Harrison coming over from the island as well in this JZX 100. Definitely winning from crowd score right now on that amazing wall drag he did in the first run. 
Let's see what he can do in the second run to step up his score from a 72. All right, Simon Harrison on a second qualifying run. Let's see what he can do. Through the chicane, clean is Simon. Three, two, one, here we go. Interesting initiation from Simon. Sounds like he's running out of gear in back there. Let's see what he can do. Stand in second gear, I'm assuming. Through the peanut is Simon. Stay on it, here we go. Do that second outside zone. Carrying all the angle and speed he needs to get out to these pool noodles. Great run from Simon so far into this final outside zone. Can he keep it out there? Yes, he can. A little bit of left foot break and never hurt nobody. Great run from Simon. Looking just like he's struggling a little bit with gearing. He's running out of second gear there. All right, and our final qualifier to go up here is Gaston. He's currently having a coffee break with Jordan. Oh, never mind, no Gaston, no Gaston, my bad. That is the end of qualifying for this BCBA comp. We should be up and running, and I think, let me double check. I'm gonna say 30 minutes to an hour, but I will notify you once they get back to me. Please get some refreshments and snacks from the, the concession stand, the blue tent, and uh, feel free to walk around and check out uh, all the cars. All the drivers are really friendly too, and they're probably more than happy to uh, talk to you about their build and maybe take you for a ride. Just ask nicely.
Drivers meeting at 2.30, comp is starting at 3 o'clock. Drivers meeting 2.30 by the DJ booth.
Attention in the pits, attention in the pits. We have a driver's meeting. All drivers to the front, please.
Simon Harrison and Chris Rimmer, please come to the driver's meeting now.
Attention media, now is your chance to get out on the track. We're about to start competition. And Andrew Schmidt, if you can hear me, get back here. All right, spectators, get your last snacks, take your last bathroom break, and make your way back to the bleachers. Competition is going to be starting here in the next 10 minutes, hopefully.
drivers line up on grid here. We're about to start the tandem portion of our uh, 235 shootout. We have a top 16 bracket with uh, 14 drivers that have qualified to run. So Sean Cordeson in the JZX100 as our number one competitor will start his day off with a bye run. Along with Gaston coming second place and qualifying will also get a bye run here. Hope everyone's got a cold drink, full belly, and is ready to watch some good drifting. Big round of applause for Jordan on the quad, as he's the guy who organizes all of this, puts all, every single second of his free time that he already doesn't have into running these drift events for us and organizing and putting on a great show and just letting everyone have a be able to do what they love on a Saturday and a Sunday. It's pretty awesome. So, big shout out to Jordan. If you see him, say thanks. Give him a big high five. Also, good way to support Jordan and the BCBA here, as it's not just Jordan, but he is the main part of this year. There's a lot of volunteers and people that help out around. Um, feel free to get one of the cool new t-shirts from the BCBA booth. They're, uh, they're awesome, actually. I like them a lot with a little bit of purple tinge to them. It's pretty slick. Alrighty, here we go, Sean. A little bit of a show off run for him here. Alright, here we go, Sean, for his bye run. Let's just listen to this beautiful Turbo 1.5 JD sing here. Sean absolutely roasting his tires here, coming through this last outside zone, showing us why he was the number one qualifier. Let's hear it for Sean, putting on a great show of what a perfect lead run should look like. First battle here, Axel in the Volvo 740 and JJ in the BMW E36. We have about maybe, maybe 150 to 200 horsepower underneath the hood of Axel's Volvo and about, I think it was 520, 530 under the hood of JJ's E36. So let's see what they can do here. Axel leading us off. Even though he's got the slower car, Axel managing to qualify higher than JJ, which means he will lead to start this run. All right, first battle. T35 shootout, Dual Doors Festival. Let's see what we can do. Axel with a slow start, tough for JJ to follow, but here he is, sticking right with Axel through that first touch and go. Axel manages to get a little bit away from JJ in the peanut. Looks like JJ's playing it smart, knowing that he might get choked up with the slower car leading him. Axel, great run from him into the pool noodles, managing to get out to the third outside zone perfectly. Here we go, Axel into the last outside zone. Little shallow, but JJ not giving him an inch in that E36. Absolutely glued to the back of that 740 for the entire run is Joe. Joe. 
All right, both drivers coming back into the start line here. We'll switch up positions. We'll see. We'll see what Axel can do here. Coming into a tough chase for Axel. He's gonna most likely pace his car a little back. The lead, the lead car is the only car that actually needs to follow the lights extinguishing. The chase car is allowed to jump the line, technically speaking, and drifting to try and get that advantage when there's a faster lead car. And that looks like that's what Axel's lining up to do. So let's see what he can do. If he can stay with Joe through this track, it's gonna be tough for him. Can Joe manage to not hit any cones? Yes, he can. All right, here we go. Axel in the chase. Managing to stick with Joe for the tip in, but Joe's starting to run away, coming through that second touch and go. Here we go through the peanut. Joe taking off from Axel. Axel looking to, to have some issues in the chase that are straightening out in the first part of the peanut. Here we go, Joe, putting on a clinic in the lead run out to the pool noodles in that third outside zone. Running away from Axel here in that E36. Joe, a little shallow at the start, but finishing off really strong in that lead position. All right, let's hear it for these two drivers. Alrighty, and Joe, Augma, Joe of Augmented Racing, taking the first win of the day here, moving himself into the grade eight. Axel putting on a great chase run, but just couldn't keep up with that fast E36 of Jojo. All right, your next competitor. Matt in the Lord Co Racing 350Z, coming off of a win in Evergreen at his first comp of the year, taking on Chad and this also VA powered 240SX. Two American powered Nissans here lining up. Both well experienced drivers. We'll see who can, who can take the win here. Should be a tight battle. Chad trying to get a little heat in his tires. All right, here we go. Chad threw half a set of tires before he gets to the start line, but they're warm. of the top 16, let's see what happens. Matt Rizuski to lead, Chad in the chase. Here we go, clean through the chicane, three, two, one. Matt taking off, trying to get away from Chad as much as he can, but Chad managing to sink, suck up to Matt in peanut here. All right, coming into that third outside zone is Matt. Chad right on his tail though, not giving him much room in the chase. Matt trying to run away as much as he can, deep into that third outside zone. Chad gonna try and suck up on this last outside zone here. Try and put it right on Matt's door. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hear it for both these drivers, putting on a great first run. I'd say a fairly even battle. Matt putting on a clean lead run, not perfect, but doing what he needs to do. But Chad also staying with him through most of it. Not a, not a crazy exciting chase run, but managing to stay in proximity and good proximity through the majority of it.
I'd say Matt's advantage as much as he now usually manages to qualify first. Matt usually is would consider himself a stronger chase driver. So we'll see uh, with a, I'd say not much of an advantage either way in the first part of the battle. Matt can try and use his chasing strength to uh, take the lead here. Okay. Um. Well, if that's working, so I gotta run this back from there and I have to come back up here and switch it. Alright, here we go. It's a light extinguish. You stay here and be easy. I wonder, can I just dip across the track? Where did I put my safety vest? It's in the safety vest. Oh, even better. Okay, I will do that. This is a restart run. Alright, managing to figure out what's going on and save some tires for the second part of this battle. Not quite Chad, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even eat my fucking chair. <laughs> Again, the driver having to follow the lights, but the chase being Matt having a very similar power package to Chad. I don't think he'll need to jump too much. Here we go, off the line. Chad, man, he's going to get all the cones. Three, two, one, let's see him go. Chad off to a great speed. Not giving him much room. Chad took the one on that battle. Oof. I hope the judges didn't hear that. Alright, as both these guys line up to get the results of this battle. I do broke for them.
got Cameron in the lead, and we got Angus and Chase. Cameron in the 240, both Allen powered cars. Let's see what they can do. This should be another great battle. All right, underway. Cameron makes it. Here we go, Gaston on his fire run. I can guarantee you Gaston is going to put on a clinic on how to run a perfect lead run through this course. So if you want to know how it's done, keep an eye on Gaston. Gaston putting on a perfect lead run coming into these <laughs> here. I don't think he's touched the handbrake on this whole run here. He's using throttles as you should be. Gaston.
chase his first run in the top 16. Here we go. The judges are going to clear the set as the lights extinguish. Let's see what happens. Phil Dyson, Nick Down. Caleb, come to the cove. All right, we are going to re-rack these drivers. Again, Caleb in the lead, Nick in the chase. Caleb, strike one on the cones. All right. All right, here we go. Caleb in the lead, Nick in the chase. We got a clean start. Nick purposely st staging himself a little bit back on that initiation, knowing he's got a little more grip dialed into that S13 than Caleb does to the Miata. Both cars coming through the peanut, though. Nick dialing, reeling Caleb in here with that 240. You know Caleb hears that SR right behind him. Caleb trying to run away from Nick in that last outside zone. Caleb a little shallow coming into it, managing to get deep into the last part of this outside zone. Finishing the run strong, both drivers. Really putting on a great lead run in that Miata. Nick, though, pressuring him through the entire run. Not giving him much room to work. All right, we are going to swap positions here. Get Nick in the lead. Caleb chasing. Caleb's probably going to stage himself back a little bit. So we can try and get a bit of a jump on Nick on the start line. We'll see what happens as these lights extinguish. All right, here we go. Coming out of the chicane, Nick in the lead. Caleb in chase. Nick tipping it in in the three, two, one. Caleb a little close to him on the tip and losing a little bit of ground, having to adjust, but catching up. It looks like Caleb. Ooh. Looks like Caleb had to straighten in the chase there. But Nick manages to keep it together in the lead. Just has to keep the lead run. Has to stay in drift here. Great into those pool noodles. Smacking them all as Nick deep into that third outside zone. Running it fully all the way out in that last outside zone as Nick down. Let's hear it for both these drivers. Caleb sadly struggling a little bit in the chase to keep up with Nick got choked off a little the peanut and then having trouble recovering the rest of the run
All right. All Here we go. We got boat divers coming around. They have uh, accidentally lined up in the wrong place to hear the score of this battle. Caleb putting on a little show here. That sweet little Miata. Let's hear it for Caleb. All right, our next battle is Clinton and the 240 LS powered versus Chris River in the 240 SR power. I mean, when you think of a sweet little drift car, this is exactly what you imagine. Perfect SR, little S13, nice and clean. I mean, it does. All right, next battle, Clinton. I repeat, that is Clinton versus Chris. Chris coming all the way over from the island. Clinton, you could say a veteran of Mission Raceway. He's been winning these grassroots comps since we started hosting them. All right, here we go, Clinton tipping it in, running away right off the bat, but Chris trying to catch up. Managing to close that gap a little bit, coming into the peanut is Chris. Clinton, though, stamp, digging out of the peanut through that second outside zone, coming into the pool noodles. Clinton, deep, making a move a little bit into the third outside zone. Just outside zone, Chris making its dive, coming into the keyhole. Here we go. Clinton. Showing his power and grip advantage in that out with that LS in the second half of that outside zone. Coming in for our second run of this battle. Chris Jason. Uh, all right, here we go. All right, Clinton, not giving Chris any space on that initiation. Staying right there with him, coming into the peanut. And right on Chris's door. Chris, though, putting on a great lead run in that SR. Coming through the second outside zone. Can he make it out to the pool noodles? Yes, he can. Little shallow, but out into that, deep into that third outside zone. Can he keep it out? Yes, he can. Keeping it all the way out there in that last outside zone. Clinton, though, on him like a magnet. Not giving him any space chasing him. Oh, 
All right, looks like these drivers know what to do. Here we go, they're coming around the Pina. We have one more battle after this in our top 16 competition and then we are moving on to the grade eight portion of this competition. All right, Chris giving us a little show. All right, and with that, Clinton Renal in the purple 240SX gets the win. Moving on to the top eight is Clinton. Let's hear it for Chris though, coming all the way over from the island, putting on a great show in that S13. Next battle, Josh Ween versus Simon Harrison. A little bit different of a setup for both of these cars, but both cars very effective drift weapons, you could say. Simon, expected earlier dragging that wall catching all those pool noodles all right here we go our last battle of the top 16 simon to, to lead josh to chase let's see what they do oh we have a cone hit on the chicane and that is our first driver to catch the light Let's hear it for Simon. Woo! Saving us some time. All right, here we go. Simon with one strike. Hitting that cone coming out of the chicane. Let's see what they can do. Can Simon manage to make it through? All right, as the lights go out, here we go. Simon to lead, Josh to chase. We have a clean start. Three, two, one. Simon with a big flick in that chaser. Josh sleeping a little bit on the initiation, but managing to catch up coming into the peanut. Simon, not too much grip in that chaser, but he's managing to stay away from Josh. Josh needing to get on that throttle. Oh, looping it, coming out of the peanut. Simon, can he keep it together? Coming into this last outside zone. Here for Simon, give him a cheer. Here we go with Simon. Josh, he's gonna be upset with that one, but he's gonna come and try and, he's gonna try and shake Simon with his lead run. Not sure where Simon's going, but he will be back hopefully. Who knows, Simon does have potentially needing the cool on that. All right, Simon, bring it back. All right, run number two of this top 16 battle, the last one. Yes, you guys think Josh can manage to make Simon spin?
for this top 16 battle. Let's see what happens. All right, Josh the lead, tipping it in. Simon not giving him any space on the initiation. Cranking a little bit of angle coming into that second touch and go. Not sure quite what happened to Simon there, but he's managing to get back into it. Has to keep an active chase here against Josh. Josh starting to run away in this G35, wanting to get away as much as he can from Simon, knowing he got a zero on his first half of this battle. Here we go into this last outside zone. Josh stepping on it, trying to finish strong here. Just clipping that, look at that. Both drivers making it clean through the second half of this battle. Not quite sure what happened to Simon. Maybe a little bit of Butterfingers coming out of the uh, first touch and go, but it could have also been a brake check from the lead driver. So we'll see what the judges have to say about that. All right, let's hear it for both of these drivers. They can hear you in their cars. All right, and to finish off our top 16, Simon Harrison taking the win in the JZX 100. Let's hear it. Coming all the way from the island, Simon putting his money where his mouth is here. Starting the top eight, we have JJ versus Sean. JJ will be chasing to start. Sean will be leading. Sean, not concerned about warming up his tires. He's very confident in his driving. Here we go, starting. Sean to lead, JJ to chase. Let's see what they can do. These guys were driving together the other day at Agassi. Let's see what they can do on mission. Joe, not giving Simon much room on that initiation, trying to stick right to him. Simon, somehow managing to find so much grip out of that JZX chassis, even on a 235. Starting to try and run away from JJ. Coming out of that second outside corner, Joe though, not letting him do it. Coming into that third outside zone. Max Angle from Sean Joe managing to catch up into this last outside zone. Let's hear it for both these drivers. Great first run of this top eight. Both of these drivers putting on a show. Sean with a fantastic lead run, which means, I mean, you can only chase a lead run that's good. So, I, I mean, what, what do they say? Chase can only be as good as the lead, so. Let's hear it for both of these drivers. These cars are sweet. Woo! Where are you going, Joel? You got one more run. Oh, he's got a cone, it looks like. Alright, Sean fully knowing that Joe is on his door. Pretty hard not to with the point that that E36 makes. He's going to know he's got to push Joe through this entire course. So it should be a pretty exciting run from both of these drivers.
All right, here we go. Joe in the lead, Sean to chase on the second portion of our top eight battle. These guys, both champions in their own. Joe catching the start cone. Shot it down though, managing to avoid contact. Good job by both of these drivers. Speaking of halfway, we're halfway through this battle. Here we go, run number two. Let's see if we can get a clean start from Joe. Seeming to have troubles avoiding cones. Here we go, all right, clean start from Joe. Sean in the chase. Managing to stick right with Joe through that first touch and go, and through the second one. Here we go, how does he stay with him through into the peanut? Sean manages to lose, oh, losing a little ground. I think he's straight back there. Joe running away from Sean. Do that second outside zone, coming into the pool noodles. Joe trying to run. Here we go, Sean catching up though, closing the gap into the slabs outside zone. Joe with a perfect lead run. A little shallow by Joe coming out of that last outside zone, but I don't know if it will matter too much. I'm not sure exactly what happened to Sean coming into the peanut there, but looked like he potentially had a bobble with his front wheels and could have straightened. We'll see what the judges have to say. Joe, I am saying JJ gets the win. We have a missing debit card. Is there a Leah or a Leah Johnson? We'll wait till Matt's done. Is there a Leah or a... RP, is there a Leah Johnson? We have your debit card. Leah Johnson, your debit card will be at the BCDA tent. If not, it will buy me a t-shirt later. <laughs> Leah, it looks like you may sponsor some t-shirts for people if you do not come get your card. I'm joking, we're nice, but go get your debit card. All right, next battle, Matt versus Angus, both V8 power cars here. Let's see what they can do. Matt, a very experienced driver. Angus, still you could consider a rookie to the pro driving, but he's been getting better and better. He's, I mean, Angus is no one to, fe is, uh, no one to shy away from. Look at him go, putting it right up to Matt through that first and second touch and go. Coming right into the peanut. Angus, being a business, Getting right up into Matt's door there, coming out of the peanut. Through that second outside zone, Matt pouring on the angle, coming through the pool noodles here. Little shallow by Matt into that, but making it out to the third outside zone. Here we go, Angus, not giving him much space, a little bit of a bobble in the chase, but managing to stay right there with Matt through the entire run. Let's hear it for both these drivers. These battles just get better and better as the day goes on.
All right, coming into the second portion of this battle here, Ang Matt. Will All right, let's see what they can do. I have a microphone again. All right, here we go. Second portion of this battle. Let's see it. Angus to lead, Matt to chase. Clean start to the chicane. Angus coming in aggressive into that first touch and go. Matt staying right there with him though. Matt wanted it. Matt looking like he straightens up a bit in the chase. We'll see what the judges have to say. Oh, Angus having to bail out. Oh, sad to see from Angus. We'll see what the judges have to say. Looks like Matt could have potentially straightened before Angus actually bowed out. There he is. Oh, old Angus. Alrighty, looks like my suspicions were right. Looks like there could have been a bobble by Matt. The judge is really having to deliberate. In the Lord Code. 350Z getting the win. Angus putting on an absolute show. I know he's going to be upset about the way he went out, but I mean, if it's Angus, he'll be back. Look at him go. Let's hear it for Angus, ladies and gentlemen. down nick you are supposed to be at the start line right now you will get disqualified if you're not i see you are winning.
One of our more, uh, you could say, experienced drivers, Gaston's been drifting for I don't know how long, probably since I've been born, but Hard Knock stunts Gaston also in probably a multiple Netflix movies you've seen, Gaston is doing stunts. All right, here we go. First run of this top eight battle. Nick chasing Gaston. Gaston managing to get away from Nick a little bit, coming into that peanut. Sorry about a little bit of a mic issue there. All right. Coming into the second portion of this run, looks like Nick might be taken. All right, here we go. Nick's coming back to the line. Nick will be leading the second portion of this top 18 battle. Here we go. Gaston chasing Nick. Nick managing to run away from Gaston. Can he make it away from Gaston? To, oh, Nick coming in hot into the peanut, looping it. Nick knowing he had to do everything possible to try and get this win after losing it in the first half of the battle. But it looks like just doing a little too much. All right, Gaston, Gaston Morrison getting the win, moving himself into the top four. Great battle by Gaston, getting a little bit of a freebie. Nick just giving it a little too much in the chase and in the lead. Knowing that he has to do 110% to beat someone like Gaston. Does anyone here have a 2JZ alternator? We are looking for an alternator for a 2JZ. As you can see, the bump start on the line. If you are someone with an alternator, Simon wants to talk to you. All right. 
Our next battle of the top eight, Clinton to lead, Simon to chase. Simon and his sweet little JZX100 chasing Clinton and his battle proven 240SX. All right, clean start from both these drivers. Oh, it looks like car issues for Simon, unfortunately. Clinton, though, taking off. Going through the peanut is Clinton with all the angle and speed you could ever imagine. Great lead run from Clinton, doing what he needs to. Simon, looks like he died in the back of the track and might be, might be out of commission here for the day, we'll see. I mean, I know he'll be open drifting, but it looks like Simon might be out of the competition. And sadly, looks like Simon will not be making it back to the line. All right, Clinton not having to fully complete a lap here. We'll see what he does. He might just tip it in. No, Clinton, though, he's going to put in a full lap. Let's see it. go shuts it down all right let's hear for Clinton getting the win moving himself into the top four We are looking for some drivers. Matt Rozeski. All right, Matt, you and Joe. Matt and JJ, you guys need to be at the start line or you are both getting disqualified. Whoever gets there first, better drive quick. Oh, Matt's getting a head start. Come on, Joe. You got it. I don't hear a seven leader. Come on, Joe, let's go. There it is.
I hear Joe coming out of the pits, maybe. So this is the first battle of our top four, JJ versus Matt Rosowski. Matt R in the 350Z, the Lord Go Racing 350Z. All right, grab your seats for these last three battles, maybe four, depending if we do a top three. Joe coming down the line. This is going to be a battle to remember, ladies and gentlemen. These are two warriors. All right, we have Lord Co Racing versus Augmented Racing. All right, let's hear it from Matt. Next up, Joseph Janik, all the way from down under. Joe's got his wife and kid here, looking to put on a show for the family. All right, who thinks Matt's got the win? Who thinks Joe's got the win? All right, all right, we got tough contention here. Let's see how we do it. Judges are set, drivers are set. All right, here we go, through the chicane, we got a clean start, Matt to lead, Joe in the chase. Very similar cars here. Joe, not giving Matt any space through those first few touch and goes. Coming into the peanut. Joe, really trying to close the gap there between Matt. Matt doing his best to run away while keeping loads of angle in the car through this whole track. Here we go, coming into the pool noodles. Matt getting right up into them. But Joe, unfazed, right behind him. Putting it right on Matt's door through this last outside zone. Joe, having to cut a bit of the track. Let's hear it for both these drivers. Joe tapping the hood of his roof, happy with that run. Joe having to cut a little bit of uh, a little bit of his line, having to shallow up to keep right on Matt through this last outside zone. But the judges are looking for proximity. As much as line is important, if the guy's running away from you, it doesn't look good. All right, Lord Co Racing versus Augmented Racing. This is a good battle so far. Let's see how the second half goes. Joe now leading Matt. Matt, again, I'd say a stronger chase driver than he is a lead driver. Not that he's a bad lead driver, but he's just an unreal chase driver. So let's see what he can do chasing Joe in this rocket ship of an E36. Here we go, lights extinguish. Out of the chicane, can Joe manage to hit, miss all the cones? Yes, he can. Three, two, one, here we go. Matt putting it right up on Joe's door through that first touch and go. Having to back off, coming through the second nose clip. Here we go, into the first outside zone. Deep into the peanut are both these drivers. 
Matt giving Joe no room. Almost a copycat run between both these drivers here. Joe, a little shallow, coming into the pool noodles, but deep into that third and the final outside zone. Matt, just like Joe, having to cut line to stay with Joe. Joe, a little shallower. Little shallow from Joe through that last outside zone. I'd say if there's any difference, Joe may be a little shallower through the track than Matt was, but it looked like Joe was maybe able to keep a tighter proximity through the, when in his chase, so we'll see what the judges decide. Let's hear it. Let both these drivers hear ya. Great runs from both of them. Yee All right, judges needing a little more time to decide this battle. You know it's a close one. All right, we want to thank Mission Raceway as well for being it, letting us host these awesome drift events and weekends and be able to have a great time out here. Thank you to Jordan and the BCDA for hosting and putting on and organizing so much uh, just so we can have fun. That's awesome. So shout out to Jordan for putting all of his time and effort into this and really making it into something special, a place we can all enjoy and really uh, have fun. All right, from the crowd, who thinks Matt took this win? Oh, that's a big cheer. Who thinks Joe took the win? Oh, this is a pretty even split for the crowd. Let's see what the judges have to say. Again, Matt, sponsored by Lordco Racing, Slats Kits, and Arrow Wolf, and I'm sure a couple more that I'm missing, so I'm sorry, but Matt, putting together a pro program, trying to chase the FD dream. And it looks like this year he may get there. So we're happy to see Matt out here competing at the local events too. Joe also chasing the FD dream, augmented racing, absolutely living it up, building all the sweetest race cars, along with Hot Rod Restos, the man Rod himself, putting together some absolute weapons for Joe. Let's hear it for Rob, standing up, give him a clap. That beautiful blue hat. <laughs> Matt, also sponsored by Zestino Tires. We love the grip. <laughs> and the judges have it. Matt Rozeski, Lord Go Racing, gets the win. That is Matt of Lord Go Racing getting the win. Let's hear it for Matt in that gorgeous 350Z. Matt Ruzecki, my bad. All right, this is the second and the last battle of our top four. We have Gaston Morrison versus Clinton Renau. That will be Matt moving on to the final battle. And the winner of this battle will verse Matt in the finals. All right. 
right, here we go. We are sending Gaston Morrison in the lead. Clinton to chase. All right, we have a clean start through the chicane. Three, two, one, here we go. Gaston tipping it in. Great through that first touch and go. Clinton giving him no room through either of those touch and goes or into the peanut. Clinton closing the gap here. Both these drivers coming out of the second outside zone. Loads of angle. Clinton right on Gaston's door though, coming into those pool noodles, having to choke up a little bit not to hit Gaston. Coming into that last final zone, here we go. Clinton putting on an absolute show in the chase. Right up on Gaston, let's hear it. Great run for both of these drivers. I'm excited to see him switch it around. Gaston being able to put in just as good of a chase as Clinton. Both these guys, unbelievable drivers behind the wheel. Clinton, probably one of, uh, I'd say definitely one of the local legends here in his 240SX. Gaston, also a very a veteran driver, not just from drifting, Gaston also running and owning Hard Knock stunts. In a lot of the Netflix movies, you see Gaston is probably the one flipping a vehicle over. All right, here we go. Sending second run of this top four battle. Who will end up against Matt, against Matt in the finals? We will see. We got a clean start through the chicane. Gaston to chase. Gaston giving Clinton no room on the initiation. Clinton though, managing to get away from Gaston, coming into the peanut. Here we go though, Gaston managing to catch up into that second outside zone. Let's see what they can, can do into the second half here. Clinton pouring on the throttle here and the angle into those pool noodles and the third outside zone. Gaston almost managing to clip Clinton, transitioning here into this last outside zone. Clinton though, getting away from Gaston. Gaston having to check up a little late on the transition, but doing a really good job not hitting Clinton in the lead. Let's see. All right, I'm excited for this final. I think mainly because I get to drive once it's done, but I'm very excited to see the finals. All right, who do you think's got it? Clinton. Ooh. How about Gaston?
And don't forget, after the competition, that is not all the driving for today or this weekend. We will also be driving all day tomorrow and for the rest of the night. So this track will open up to some party laps and there's plenty of driving going on in the back track too. Judge is having a rough one with this. All right, and we have a one more time. All that time to call her one more time. Here we go. Both drivers are gonna check their tires and hopefully they are good. Let's hear for both these drivers. They don't have their helmets on, they can hear ya. Oh, looks like we need new tires. Please be patient with us as we swap tires, as sadly we do not have a battle that we can run instead of these two. So we will have to wait for these guys to swap tires. Um, maybe let them hear it afterwards. Tell them they're slow at doing it when you see them in the pits. They can get better. All right, well, these guys are changing tires. Sean's gonna come out and give us a couple party laps. Show us how to run some good uh, 100 point qualifiers in this chaser. Love this compound turbo sang. Big ups, let's let Joe hear it. Coming for his third place battle. Trying to get the W.
All right, here we go. We got Sean to show off a little bit. I mean, as much as he was struggling, looping it in comp, let's see what he can do for a couple show-off laps. We all know he's from Alberta, so he struggles a little bit with those corners, but let's see him go. All right, there he goes. Sean always putting on a great show. I mean, if, when it comes to the definition of throttle commitment, the definition could be Sean Cordeson. I mean, this guy does not let off the throttle this entire track. It's absolutely amazing to watch. Look at that wheel work, absolutely locking him out, coming into that last outside zone. Let him hear it, people. Woo! That thing is, what a vehicle. I mean, quite an interesting setup for Sean's engine, running a 1.5 JZ with a compound turbo setup, something you usually see out of a diesel truck when it comes to turbos, but I mean, it sounds amazing. All right, we are looking for Gaston and uh, Mr. Clinton. How's the tire change going, boys? I see Gaston moving. I don't quite see Clinton yet. Oh, what am I saying? Clinton's a mile out of Gaston. Look at him go. All right, if you've been walking around, get your seats. This one more time battle is about to begin. Clinton pulling up to the burnout box. Gaston in tow. Light him up, Clint. Uh, don't forget to pick up your sweet BCDA merch at the BCDA tent right as you pull in. And if not retrieved yet, Leah Johnson, your debit card is found. Never mind. Scratch that. All right, Gaston warming up his tires. He will be leading to start. <laughs> this top four battle. Ah, uh, who's excited for some tandems? All right, here we go. Clinton got him warmed up. We got confirmation. We are good to go. Let's go. Gaston to lead. Clinton to chase. This one more time battle. Clean start through the chicane. Three, two, one. Here we go. Gaston to lead. Clinton. A little bit 
further behind this time, chasing Gaston. Gaston looking fast, but Clifton closing that gap, coming into the peanut here. A little low on angle, but still managing to stay right with Gaston. Gaston pouring on the angle and the speed coming out of that outside zone two into those pool noodles. Can he make it? Yes, right out into the deep, into the outside zone three. Clinton, though, glued to him through this last outside zone. Gaston a little shallow through the start of it, but ending off right up onto that wall. Here we go. That's a great start to this top four one more time. they come let's re-rack him Gaston to chase Clinton to lead now I'd say it's a tough call I wouldn't say anyone has a clear advantage coming into the second run both drivers putting on a clean uh, clean run in their respective positions on the racetrack here. Gaston looking to pace himself a little bit behind Clinton as Clinton can really take off with that car. A oh, little bit looks like our arch might be blown away. All right, here we go. Coming into our second run of this one more time battle, Gaston chasing, using that little bit of a jump to stay right with Clinton for this initiation. Clinton flicking it in, Gaston though, right up onto his door through that first touch and go, backing off so he can pace himself properly. Coming into this peanut here, putting it right back onto Clinton's door through the first half of the peanut. How do they do through outside zone two? Clinton trying to get away, Gaston having to shallow up his line a little bit to stay with him. Clinton managing to put in a great lead run here, getting right out into this last outside zone, right into both of these codes. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it. Great top four battle by both these drivers. Gaston's gonna be a little bit upset about at himself coming from that outside zone two through the pool noodles there, having to check up a little bit on angle, but managing to stay in drift through the whole thing. Big shout out to our judges today, Mitch, Jamie, and Ian, putting in a full day's work here, along with our other Ian on the start line. Always putting in the work at every single event, running the line, being the man. Doing the right thing. Big ups to uh, Checkpoint Estonia for being out here, checking out the drift track. Looks like the judge is having another tough time with this battle. Hopefully having a decision here. Love to see all the kids that came out today. Thank you parents for bringing your kids, aspiring the young ones to get into a fantastic sport and waste all of their money.
Anyone else loving the sunshine today? That's kind of a nice treat in April, eh? If you think it's the Chinese government, it's not. It's Steel Real Productions on the drone, flying around, chasing all these guys, doing a great job today. Big shout out to Steel Real. He's always getting us sweet clips of our cars and send them out to the drivers for free. He's a, a true man, a true gentleman, providing drivers with videos of their cars, I mean. There's nothing sweeter than a drone right on your tail for a full lap. Oh, here we go. The judges have made a decision. Gaston with the win. Gaston taking the W. Here we go. All right, Gaston to face Matt Rizek. I'm just Matt R in the 350Z. I, I've been saying it wrong all day, and I feel bad now. Rizeki, Matt Rizeki in the Lord Go Racing, 350Z. All right, Clinton, no need to stop. An absolute man. Lining up for his third place battle against JJ. Ruschetsky, Matt Ruschetsky. Thank you. All right, this is for our third place. You could say our third place champion, the bottom step of the podium, but it is still a step on the podium. Here we go, Clinton to lead, Jojo, or jo uh, JJ to chase. Here we go, JJ, right on Clinton's door through that first touch and go, not giving Clinton any room. JJ wanting a spot on the podium today, hopping that curve. Oh, looks like potentially taking himself out though. Clinton staying in it, putting the full lap together. Can he do it? Out to the pool noodles is Clinton. Here we go, into the last outside zone. Let's hear it for Clinton. Yee! Unfortunate for JJ and the E36 looks to potentially have broke something. I don't know JJ to give up unless his car is completely unusable, so I'm gonna assume there was an issue with the car. Sadly, this song couldn't be better timed. Another one bites the dust, ladies and gentlemen. All right, Rod, you're on the spotlight. What's going on with the car, Rod? Help us out here. <laughs> oh, looks like he's got it figured out. Oh, JJ, back to the line. Not gonna be happy with that. All right, and I would like to call Matt Rzetsky and Gaston. Please make your way to the line. Matt, I'm gonna pronounce your name differently every time.
right. Looks like Joe back in the car. Joe having to call his competition five minutes on the line. Interesting choice, but a true, a true manly move by Joe. Quick check and back to it. All right, we got a clear descent from both drivers. Let's see how it goes. Second part of this battle, Joe knowing he's got to give it 145% to try and shake Clinton here in the chase. Joe managing to get through the chicane clean. Let's see it, three, two, one. Joe getting into the touch and go beautifully. Great into that second touch and go two. Whoa, whoa, it's an angle. Going into the peanut, saving it though. Is Joe Clinton getting right up onto him, playing it safer, knowing he's got a big advantage coming into this. JoJo, though, a little shallow coming into this. Oh, there you go, managing to make it out to the last outside zone is Joe. Clinton, a little bit far behind, playing it safe for this run. JJ, though, let's hear it for both these drivers. Joe potentially running a little bit more of a conservative run knowing his car may not be 100% not wanting to throw it into a wall. Clinton strategically placing himself a little bit back from Joe knowing that he just has to stay in an active chase to get the win here with the knowledge Joe Spinninger shutting it down in the last lap. The judges have a winner. The third place winner will be announced on the podium after we figure out our first and second place. All righty. In our final, first up. Let's hear it for both those drivers. JJ and Clinton putting on a show for that third place battle. All right, first up, Gaston Morrison of Hard Knock Stunts, SCG Performance. Gaston, our veteran driver, or one of our veteran drivers here in his practice car, even though it is his practice car, does not mean this is, a win is not a winner's car. Gaston can absolutely handle the living, uh, he can handle this car. Hey, Gaston, very good driver. All right, Matt Rizelski coming in. Lord Co Racing. Matt wanting to get two wins in this 235 shootout, claiming the first victory in our October BCDA 235 shootout. Matt Rizelski. Coming in. All right, who is ready for the final battle of the BCDA 235 shootout? Let's go, Gaston to lead, Matt to chase. Gaston with a clean start, tipping it into the touch and go. Matt though, not giving him any room in that 350Z. Gonna try and close it up, coming into the peanut here. And he, as he does, Gaston cannot get away from Matt in the missile of a 350Z here. Staying right with Gaston, coming into these pool noodles. Gaston getting right out into them. Perfect into this third outside zone. And also perfect into this final outside zone. Managing to shake Matt a little bit. Matt having to cut his line in the chase to stay with Gaston. What a great run for both these drivers. Let's hear it.
two 350Zs, one powered by an LS, the other powered by a VQ. Who will win? All right, Gaston now switching to the lead run or to the chase run. Matt switching to the lead. The challenge will be, can Gaston manage to keep up with Matt in this V8 350Z Lord Co racing? All right, we got an okay from the judge. We got an okay from both drivers. Light them up, let's go. Gaston pacing himself a little bit behind Matt to stay up with him. Matt with a clean lead start through the chicane. I don't know what quite happened there. Gaston getting ahead of Matt. Really messing up Matt on that initiation. Not quite sure what went on there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, that is the battle. That is the finals and how we will end our competition. The judges have deliberated a winner and are gonna come around here and announce it in just a few minutes. Can we have our top three? I see Joe has left. Joe, if you'd like to at least stand out there, um, get all our drivers up to the front of the grandstands here and we will announce our winner. And for drivers, your night is not over. There is still plenty of driving after the competition tonight. So make sure you still got tires and you're ready to go.
that these poor studs We got these four beautiful gentlemen um, coming to the podium. Here we go. Our judges potentially look like they got caught in traffic on the way here, but they're here. Let's hear it for our three judges, Jamie, Ian, and Mitch, putting in a full day of work here, letting us have an awesome competition. place. All right, sorry, we'll start with fourth place. Fourth place, JJ, let's hear it for him in the Augmented Racing E36. All right, and then to the things that matter, the podium. All right, who's getting the first step? In third place, we have Clinton in the purple 240SX representing half decent. Our most recent winner of the grassroots competition. And then in first place, taking the weekend in a blue 350Z, representing Lorco Racing, Matt, I still can't say your last name, Rosowski. And in second place, Gaston Morrison, taking it home for Hard Knock Stunts. Ladies and gentlemen, these are your top three competitors at the BCDA 235 shootout. Let them hear ya. Thank you everyone for being and keeping the sport alive and growing, especially locally. We got a great scene here and it's only getting better with you guys being out here for every event. We love drifting. And yes, thank you to Jordan, hosting all these events, putting in every single ounce of effort he has left in him to keep these things running smoothly. All righty, well that is it for our competition portion of the weekend. We are now going to party, ladies and gentlemen. These guys, it goes from two cars to eight cars in a train. Let's have some fun, there's plenty of driving to go around tonight. Remember, get your BCDA merch at the tent and uh, ask a driver for a ride along if you wanna go for one.